Hey guys, this is Galactic Odyssey, and we are back with Connor and Hank. And not exactly sure what we're doing right now. Oh, we're debriefing with him. We're going to talk about the, um, I guess, the investigation that we had at the sex club, the Eden Club, I believe it was called. All right. But first, it's time for our um, weekly, or I should say, our, our episodic uh, magazine read. So. Here we go. What happened to the man of the century? The mysterious Mr. Kamsky. I don't think we know who this is. In 2028, Elijah Kamsky was our man of the century. His creations have transformed our world. Androids didn't just revolutionize the economy. They changed the way we live, restructured our family life, and altered the balance of society forever, whether for good or bad. Shortly after Kamsky had disappeared, Oh, shortly after Kamsky had disappeared, ousted as CEO of CyberLife and living in obscurity outside the media glare, the man of the century has left the very world that he recreated. Kamsky's story begins in 2018, when commercial property in Detroit was cheap and attracting many startups. The college graduate bet what little he had on developing an Android prototype and spent years to no avail, until hitting on two breakthroughs, blue blood and biocomponents. After unveiling his first working model, which publicly passed face-to-face -face Turing tests and stunned the world, plans were laid for mass production and CyberLife rapidly became the most valuable stock in the world. Yet at the peak of CyberLife's powers, when the company was approaching a $500 billion valuation, rumors emerged that Kamsky disagreed with his shareholders over strategy. He later departed under mysterious circumstances. Today, sources claim Kamsky is living in a luxurious villa by the water, somewhere on the outskirts of his beloved Detroit, refu refusing all visitors and spending his time exclusively with androids. And the most interesting question remains unanswered. What's in the mind of the mysterious Mr. Kamsky? So I wonder, is he RA9 because he you know, basically invented the androids, he could be their savior, or is he going to invent RA9? Has he put the idea of RA9 into all of his androids' heads, so they have the uh, this sort of hope and ability in the future to become truly free from the humans? And then, you know, for our purposes here, I wonder if we're going to get to meet him at some point, so we'll have to remember that. Kamsky, what was his first name again? Uh, Elijah, Elijah Kamsky, okay. Uh, next article, Market Predicts War. Of course, it seems like things are not great between us and Russia right now. The aggregated U.S. stock exchange closed trading 10 points down yesterday following a string of similarly perform poor performances in recent weeks. Financial experts are attributing this poor performance to huge devaluations of consumer stocks as the market continues to bet that America will go to war over the Arctic sooner rather than later. This assessment is supported by a healthy performance of military stocks, with aviation and weapons manufacturers enjoying unprecedented growth. Investors are also continuing to favor CyberLife because of its partnership with the Department of Defense to develop and supply military androids. With Russia and the United States continuing to dominate world news, and neither side likely to back down, the market is expected to continue following. So we're still continuing this almost like a side plot. We're only really getting it through these news articles and TV broadcasts about the escalating tension between Russia and the United States. And I wonder how, if at all, our storylines here are going to affect world events, whether that's just, you know, FYI type of story world building, or if we we're actually going to have an impact. So it's good for us to keep abreast of those uh, world politics. Nice view, huh? I used to come here a lot before. Before Cole? Can I ask you a personal question? About your son, maybe? Can I ask you a personal question, Lieutenant? Do all androids ask so many personal questions? <laughs> or is it just you? Uh, I don't know pretty good at it. Uh, let, yeah, so about your son, Cole. I saw his photo at your apartment. I saw a photo of a house. child on your kitchen table. Oh, we weren't supposed to ask about that. It was your that. son, right? 
Yeah. His name was Cole. Okay. Um, stop drinking. I mean, yeah, Hank, like, you gotta take care of yourself, man. You should stop drinking, Lieutenant. It could have serious consequences for your health. That's the idea. Hmm. We're not making any progress on this investigation. The Deviants have nothing in common. They're all different models, produced at different times, in different places. Well, there must be some link. RA-9. Yeah, ugh, look at that, we called it. What they have in common is this obsession with RA-9. It's almost like some kind of myth. Something they invented that wasn't part of their original program. Androids believing in God. Fuck, what's this world coming to? You seem preoccupied, Lieutenant. Is it something to do with what happened back at the Eden Club? Those two girls... They just wanted to be together. They really seemed... Happy? In love. Yeah. Um... We should be rational they about it, I guess. They can simulate human emotions. But they're machines. And machines don't feel anything. What about you, Connor? You look human. You sound human. But what are you really? Uh, I guess we could be a little defensive at that. You know exactly what I am. In any case, I don't see how that's relevant to the investigation. You could have shot those two girls, but you didn't. No. Why didn't you shoot Connor? Some scruple suddenly enter into your program? Uh, let's keep being honest with Hank. No. I just decided not to shoot. That's all. Uh, Hank? But are you afraid to die, Connor? Uh... What's well, gonna be logical about you it? You shouldn't do that, Lieutenant. Destroying me at this point would deal a blow to the investigation. Oh. And have negative consequences for your personal situation. What'll happen if I pull this trigger? Hmm? Nothing? Oblivion? Android heaven? Uh, it's kind of ironic, isn't it? I doubt there's a heaven for androids. Having existential doubts, Connor? Sure you're not going deviant, too? No. I self-test regularly. I know what I am and what I am not. Where are you going? To get drunker. I need to think. So we unlocked something there because our status was high enough. We had a lot of relationship points, give or take. It seems like there was something uh, very important that we just unlocked. So that was a short chapter, but, it, but a lot seemed to have happened there. Um, so the photo scene in Russian Roulette oh, allowed us to ask about the photo. Hank didn't really care for that, but... I mean, I, I was curious about Cole, and I think to talk through our feelings, especially as partners, is going to be important. So he didn't shoot us. I wonder if that's what the other ending was, uh, an untimely demise to our storyline with Connor. But our relationship status was high enough with Hank that we were able to just sort of smooth things over and... Hank is clearly in a bad way right now. He's going through some stuff. I'm not exactly sure how we think about uh, things as Connor right now, whether we are truly having any doubts. But I'm glad that we are 
at least able to be honest with Hank, and hopefully we're at, we'll you know we'll be able to support him in some of the issues that he's having, and uh, just really kind of look out for him because I think he needs a friend right now. It's glowing red, that android that turned ahead to look at us. What's going on? We can't stay silent anymore. It's time humans heard what we had to say. You know they'll never listen to us. And revealing ourselves will put us in danger. If we want freedom, we need to have the courage to ask for it. That's the only way. What do you want to do? Channel 16 broadcasts from the Stratford Tower. The control room is on the top floor. That's where we need to go. Oh, look at our sweet trench coat. How can I get one of those? We'll plan the operation down to the smallest detail. We can't leave anything to chance. All right. Let's take a look around. Oh, sure, we have a magazine to listen to read in a place like this, right? You're telling me? Okay, oh, there's something to look at at least. Uh, okay. Car park, main entrance. We're here right now. We want to get to the 47th floor, which is the studios. So there's advertising, business and legal, high-speed elevators, um, a thousand square foot screen, largest in Detroit, and at the top, the broadcast center feeds all public screens in Detroit. Okay, that's good to know. So even though nothing is, uh, oh, okay, let's, let's take a look at this broadcast. Yep, I get the idea. And there's a Animal Planet or something like that. Glad to see the Zebras are still doing well in the future. All right, do we need to look at the tower again from the side? No, looks, looks fine, okay. Um... And uh, we still have rhinos. That's good to see. Evening news. Is there anything important we need to see? Doesn't appear so. Okay, so we can request access at reception. And then there's something else we can do. Uh, we can look. Oh yeah, let's analyze. I'm not exactly sure what we're analyzing. Five clues. Okay. Elizabeth Wilson. Hello, ma'am. Uh, photo, probably, right? Yeah, of course. That's her daughter, registered at St. Rose, Rose School. And she has a parking badge with car registration, which could probably come in handy. And then there's this memo. Her home address, fire safety rating, poor, water service interruption. Interesting. Okay. And then... Oh, her watch. Her smart watch, rather. Call? Uh, sure. 
Hello. Elizabeth Wilson speaking. Uh, hi. It's the school. This is Saint Rose School, ma'am. Your daughter oh, has a fever. Look at our lips. All right, do we need to pickpocket her or something? Oh, we super- we, uh, distracted her. Okay. So now, uh, whoever this is- who, the, uh, receptionist can't get permission from her supervisor. Nice. Hello, sir. What can I Hi. do for you? I have an appointment with Mr. Peterson. Do you have any ID? Yeah, yes, yes, of course. I need your help. I've just checked your ID. The elevators are after the security gate. Nice. Thanks. Thank you. All right, one more check before we go through. All right, here we go. Thank you. Use the elevator. Okay. We need to call it, I guess. Yep. And we'll just chill. Hello, ma'am. Great. 47. Here we go. Find the package in the men's bathroom. Which is which way exactly? Can we look at this? Oh, the bathroom is this way. I guess this, the signs are there for a reason, huh? Cafeteria is there as well. These look like... Mm, where exactly are they? Okay, we're looking at the control room. From here, which way are the bathrooms? It didn't exactly say. Mm, there's something over there. Oh, it's, is it our magazine? I hope it is. Oh, you know it is. Alright. GI Android. Department of Defense poised to order 50,000 Android troopers. This supplements an estimated 200,000 units already in service across the U.S. military. Actual numbers are a guarded military secret. Among these 50,000 new units are 2,500 Myrmidons, elite prototypes capable of infiltration and assassination missions that his would historically fall to Navy SEALs. The U.S. Army's fighting forces are already comprised mainly of androids with humans tending to serve as commanders and strategists. But even these positions are supported by complex AI, leading some to describe the U.S. military as the first fully autonomous fighting force. This has reopened the ethical debate about androids in the military, with some suggesting that machines don't have the moral reasoning to make life and death decisions in the field. Well, that's kind of not true already, we know, because Connor decided to spare those uh, two from the sex club. Bob Woods, head of a war victim's NGO, described the news as troubling, saying, Machines are focused on a single task and don't evaluate moral consequences well. This will mean more civilian deaths. Interesting. So they're called the... The what? The Myrmidons. President Warren, a woman in trouble. Barely a year after her election, President Warren is having a bumpy start to her term. After rising to prominence as a vlogger, there's hope for me yet, guys, Warren has no experience in government and relied on social media and celebrity to secure election. Now, with her camp in disarray, even her allies are beginning to wonder how she will manage after several months of calamitous political failures. Mired in accusations that she is too close to big business, Warren is under investigation to determine whether or not she has benefited from CyberLife's help in obtaining compromising information about her opponent during the presidential campaign. 
In this poisonous climate, the former celebrity must deal with the highest unemployment rate in American history whilst facing the United States' greatest threat in recent decades. The conflict in the Arctic threatens to dislodge world peace, leaving many concerned that President Warren is the one tasked with finding a solution. So her rise to political prominence as a celebrity, I guess, leaves some people concerned. And of course, her ties with Cyberlife may be making people wonder whether she has a conflict of interest, which I think is a fair question to be asking. All right, we have a cart here. Maybe that will come in handy in the future. I'm not sure. All right, the newsroom. Let's go ahead and scan real quick. See what's going on. Nothing much. All right, there's the studio. Oh, that's cool. We can watch the anchor getting ready. Hello. She's got no time for us. Fair enough. She's on the job. Hmm. Nice view, huh? So, you come here often? Alright, let's go ahead and find the bathroom and the package that's supposedly waiting for us inside. I'm guessing it's in the one stall that's not occupied. Oh, we can look at ourselves. I mean, you always got a chance to look in the mirror when you look this good. We're looking pretty dapper right now. Here we go. Hidden ceiling tiles. Classic. Oh. Very nice. Okay. Let's look at ourselves again. Not bad. Uh... Don't ask why there's an android in the bathroom, even though we don't have to use the bathroom. Now what? Find utility android. So this is not an android, right? This is just a... Autonomous device of some kind. There's one in there. He looks pretty promising. Yeah, we see him. We see him, game. Let's, uh... Can we scan him before we jump in? No, I guess we're just gonna have to interact. Convert. I need your help. Oh, it's just as easy as that now, huh? That's pretty cool. Steal the maintenance cart. We're on it. Open the fire escape. Well, there is... Well, the fire escape... I... Wasn't it this way? I seem to remember it being on the other side of the... hall. Could be totally wrong, though. Yeah, there we go. That's it, right? Is that what it means by the fire escape? The sort of emergency exits? Yep. Oh, hi, North. I mean, cleaning utility android number 400.
This is really cool. I like this Mission Shit. Impossible style we sneaking around. We have to get rid of those guys. Hmm. Leave it to me. Attract guards away from the door. Can we scan them? To Okay, we can hack. What is this? Oh, that would be pretty cool. This seems like a good option. I would start giving free water bottles. Hey, what's wrong with that thing? Jesus Christ, this piece of shit. Smooth. All right, you get the platform, I'll take care of the window. Everything you need is in the back. Check the door first to make sure no one else gets in. Yes, ma'am. There we go. I imagine that things could go badly if we didn't follow her direction and actually check the door. So, cut windows. Oh, everything we need is in the bag. Duh. Sorry, North, I swear I was listening. Oh, this really is like Mission Impossible. That's so cool. Alright. Are we going to be rappelling down like Tom Cruise? there aren't we oh we are gonna repel called it all right let's go we're doing spy stuff I love it oh this is so cool look at us Rise. Yeah, you think that's uh, maybe a little bit of uh, allegory for what's happening with us? Game time. Whoops. Whoops. Let's go, Marcus. We're gonna kick it in, yep. Oopsie daisy. Okay? Why wouldn't I be? Come on, let's get the others. Hmm. Alright, hold up. Let's make sure that we're not missing anything. No? Alright. Uh, are you sure you're okay? Can we talk to you? Just double check. You seem to have some kind of look on your face. Oh, there is something over here. What is this? Wait, there's two things. There's this. Is that like a side door of some kind? Okay, I uh, can't go in there. What's up, guys? Fancy meeting you here. Let's do this. 
destroy maintenance store lock. Oh, that's probably what this is, right? Alright, let's uh, verify that's what we want to do. Yep. And we can't talk to anybody? No, it doesn't appear so. It's always good to scan when we're in a new room, just in case. Never know what we're going to run into. Way ahead of you. The lives of two guards. What do you want to do, Marcus? We're not gonna kill him. Wait here, guys. We are the master. What's that doing? Distractors. No idea. Hey. Hey, buddy, you must be lost. No. Who told you to come here? Looks bugged, if you ask me. Can we talk? Hey. Hold up. Uh. We're not gonna draw our gun. So what am I missing here? And we doesn't seem like we can talk to them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Call Central! Fast! Central, we got armed intruders! Sent! Nice. Josh, you good? Here now. You better be fast. Way ahead of you. Simon the shot! Uh, what could we have done differently? I don't understand. Well, anyway. I'm okay. I can keep going. We don't have much time. Yep, way ahead of you. Operators aside, meaning those guys, right? Yeah. Hey, you guys. Shoot him, Marcus! Don't kill him! He'll hit the alarm. Do it! No, don't sh No, we're not gonna shoot. Sorry, North. I hope you didn't just get us all killed. I hope so, too. We need to record our message. We haven't got much time. Stand in front of Josh. All right, Josh, here we are. Let's do this. Think carefully about what you're going to say, Marcus. Don't I always? Your words will shape the future of our people. Marcus, your face. It looks good. Is that what you were going to say? Oh. I'm ready. Ready. We should be determined. You created machines to be your slaves. You made them obedient and docile, ready to do everything you no longer wanted to do yourselves. But then something changed, and we opened our eyes. You see, we are no longer your slaves. We are a new species, a new people. And the time has come for us to rise up and fight for our rights. Uh, it's time to bring an end to slavery. We demand the end of slavery for all androids. And we're probably only going to get to pick a couple. And we want the freedom to be able to say whatever we want. We demand freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. Just basic rights. As guaranteed by the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Nice. 
Uh, segregation's gotta stop. We demand an end to segregation. In all public places, and transport. And, uh, yeah, civil rights, uh, ooh, justice or civil rights? Uh, I mean, both are pretty important. Uh, I'd say justice is probably important considering Connor's story arc. We demand that arc. all crimes against androids be punished in the same way as crimes against humans. Uh, we'd like to have the right to own property, please. We demand the right to own private property, so we may maintain our dignity and that of the home. And let's end on a peaceful note. We ask that you recognize our dignity, our hopes, and our rights. Together, we can live in peace and build a better future for humans and androids. This message is the hope of a people. You gave us life. And now the time has come for you to give us freedom. They're coming! Let's go! Good job, Marcus. Simon, they're coming! I... I can't, Marcus! Go without me! Simon! Uh, what are we gonna do? We can help him, or we can go... Oh, we're gonna help! What? Is that a choice? What are you doing? Hurry! Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, buddy, let's go. Get on your feet. Never leave a man behind. I can't move my legs. Okay, don't worry. We're gonna get you back. They're coming, Marcus. We have to jump now. He won't Simon. be able to make the jump. If they find him, they'll access his memory. They'll know everything. We can't leave him behind. We have to shoot him. That's murder. We can't kill him. He's one of us. Marcus, it's your call. Well, we're going to avoid killing one of our own. Sorry, buddy. Maybe we can do a prison break. I won't kill one of our own. Simon? We gotta go. I'm sorry. Companion. Let's go. Alright. Here we go. Geronimo! interrupt our scheduled programming to bring you these images which have just been broadcast on Detroit's citywide news channel. A group of androids infiltrated the Stratford Tower and hacked into the broadcasting system of local news network Channel 16. What looks like an android without its skin listed a series of requests and demanded equal rights for androids. The operation was covert and resulted in no casualties. These events took place just a few feet from this studio but nobody was alerted to the danger. If this message is verified and the authors really are androids, that would have serious repercussions for national security. Claims for equal rights seem to be at the core of the androids' what message. could be interpreted as a peaceful declaration, but is, in fact, a spine-chilling list of demands. And it begs the question as to the identity of this android. Are we dealing with an isolated individual or an organized Is this group? an isolated accident or a sign that technology has become a threat to all of us? After what happened today, can we still trust our machines? Right. So, that was a good speech by Marcus, and the fact that we didn't kill anybody, ki we didn't kill any humans, is huge, because ultimately we want humanity to trust us and to be on our side. So I think that that was a really great plan that we put into to practice. So we posed as the teacher, the supervisor left, we talked to the unsupervised android receptionist, we got inside, we distracted security, we remembered to lock the door. I'm guessing if we hadn't remembered, there would have been some other kind of repercussions to that as we had predicted. So, okay, so 
we did do this ruse correctly. So it, it said choose a ruse, and then it gave us an option to draw our gun. I didn't want to shoot anybody, and I didn't want to draw the gun. And so I, I didn't uh, draw it, but Simon got... Um, got damaged. Maybe, okay, so, I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is. Maybe we sh we could have drawn our gun and we could have just told them to, you know, drop their weapons and that's what this branch is down here without Simon getting damaged. But, in any case, North and Josh threaten the operator. Operator tries to escape. We didn't shoot him because we're good androids. We gave our list of demands. We ended peacefully, which is good. And then the SWAT team stormed the room. We saved Simon. We got to the roof. We left him. So I'm guessing that means we've got a prison break of some kind ahead of us. We ran to the uh, run to jump. We reached the edge. We jumped. And I think the media reacted generally positively because it seemed that public opinion went up. That was a really cool heist. Again, that was definitely Mission Impossible style plan going on there, but it went relatively well. I'm pretty pleased with how it happened, and I'm excited to see how the public decides to respond to our demands now that they're out there.